Hello everyone. So recently, it's been all over on the news. Uh, Nissan has decided to discontinue the Nissan Navara in uh, Europe. The Nissan Navara D23. It is uh, going to be discontinued in the European market uh, by the end of this year. And uh, you see, honestly, I have a mixed reaction, a mixed feeling about this uh, decision, uh, about this development. Uh, first of all, I have to say I was surprised, but then at the same time, I was not surprised. First, I would like to talk about why I was surprised. I was surprised because the Nissan Navara is no ordinary Nissan. The Nissan Navara is a legendary model that has been with Nissan since the very, very beginning. In the history of the Navara, it all started with Datsun, the Datsun pickups. In the 1990s was when the first ever Nissan Navara with the name Navara was released publicly. Now, you see, this was very, very... The Nissan Navara has had a very strong reputation in Europe. In the off-roading community and also in the 4x4 community, there was a time the Nissan Navara was very popular. It was very uh, much spoken of. Uh, and I would say in the 2000s, it was the peak year for the Nissan Navara here in Europe. It was, they were just everywhere. They were very, very uh, much spoken of. Uh, reliability and such. Although in the 2000s, reliability did suffer, I must confess. Uh, that was uh, Nissan's problem. The part that also surprises me about the discontinuation of the Navara is that you see, Nissan has been introducing a lot of interesting models for the North American market, but it seems like they have not done the same effort for the European market, for the EU market. Uh, there, it seems to be mo that majority of the models are... You see, it seems like Nissan is losing interest in the European market, but that's just my thought, and it doesn't surprise me in that sense because Renault and Nissan have an alliance. So Renault is probably telling Nissan, listen, let me handle Europe, you go handle North America. And Nissan is like, okay, all right, we'll do it like this. On the topic of the Navara, to discontinue it, I don't know. I actually am a bit lost for words because you see, it's, they, and I also feel, that I'm also a bit surprised that Nissan is not going to do anything to keep the Navaras in the European market because, uh, Nissan can at least try to introduce a technology to make the Navara more environmental friendly. Technologies like a hybrid technology, a hybrid petrol engine, or maybe an electric Navara, an electric pickup truck. Why not? But you see, those are probably fictitious thoughts because the Nissan Navara is no ordinary car. It's not a crossover SUV. The Nissan Navara is a heavy pickup truck. So if you want to introduce a hybrid petrol or an electric motor for the Navara, you have to have a huge electric motor and a huge battery pack in order for that because the nature of the Navara is that it's a pickup truck. And if you have to have a huge uh, battery pack, it's going to be very conspicuous and aesthetically it's not going to look good. And also it's not going to have the off-road capability as a combustion engine would. However, on the other side of the scale, I have to say that I am not entirely surprised. First of all, let's talk about competition. The Nissan Navara has become a very weak competitor in the recent years. The Nissan Navara is very reliable, okay? Don't get me wrong. I drive a Nissan Navara and I'm a proud Nissan Navara owner. Uh, I drive a Nissan Navara D23 2019, which I brought brand new, and I'm very happy with it. But I think it was a weak competitor because of sales. The Navara didn't really appeal much to the public. And I have to say that the re in recent years, the Ford Ranger has been craving, uh, the Ford Ranger has been gaining a very big name here in Belgium. And so has the Volkswagen Amarok. And if you want to talk about something Japanese, it seems like the Toyota Hilux has been taking the trophy since a very long time. Ever since Top Gear did the episode of uh, the indestructible Toyota Hilux, everybody has gone crazy about the Toyota Hilux. And now to this very day, this reputation of being indestructible lives on with the Hilux. And it's proven. The Hilux is very popular amongst the law enforcement, amongst the military, also amongst the, the fire team, and also construction companies. Also, this leaves me to wonder, uh, 
Why hasn't Nissan done much publicity for the Navara? It's, uh, you know, over all those years, Nissan didn't really do any effort to make the Navara very popular. You see, and this is why the competitors were able to crush the Navara in the EU market. Another reason why I'm not so surprised about the need, I'm not surprised about the discontinuation of the Nissan Navara in the EU market is because Nissan doesn't seem to realize that they didn't do much effort. They didn't do much publicity for the Navara. I always felt like the Navara had a very dormant title. They were popular, but from Nissan's side, Nissan didn't do much publicity for the Navara. They just, they were very dormant about it. The only pickup they did publicity for was the Nissan Titan, but that was in the North American market. Also, another reason why the uh, Nissan Navara is going to be discontinued in Europe is because lately, the trend of 4x4s has been coming to an end. Yes, SUVs have been skyrocketing in fame. But those are road-friendly SUVs done by luxury brands like the BMW X5, the Range Rover. But 4x4s, which were built for off-roading like the Mitsubishi Pajero or also known as Mitsubishi Montero and the Toyota Land Cruiser, they have been discontinued. It seems like the Nissan Navara is another 4x4, another Japanese 4x4 that is going to be... Uh, stopped in the EU market. I find these developments very unpleasant. It's a, to me, it's an unpleasant development. I'm not happy with the, this news uh, because I think the Nissan Navara is a very uh, reputed uh, model. It's a model that has a very long heritage. You have to protect the heritage. You have to defend it. You can't just make the decision to ax it out. You cannot, but okay. Also, you have environmental initiatives. Environmental initiatives are the reason why tax have been increased and also uh, fuel prices and also the banning of old diesel engines in the capital city of Brussels. And there are also other capital cities in the EU that have taken this decision to ban old diesel engines, which I can 100% respect. I 100% respect and I 100% support the environmental initiatives that have been taken by EU nations. But what I cannot support is that year by year, car manufacturers are being forced to go down the mainstream route for cars. The Nissan Navara was a car that was not so mainstream. It was like a flagship model of the Nissan in Belgium. It was a special car. And now Nissan is going to ditch it because of its environmental initiatives. It may sound fictitious, okay? But why couldn't Nissan just come up with a hybrid technology for the Navara? Why couldn't they come up with an electric version of a Navara? That's a mystery that will always remain in my mind, guys. Unanswered. I'll have never an answer to this question. But as I said, guys, I support the environmental initiatives no matter what. I think they have to be supported no matter what because the environment is first priority. But I also think we need to have aesthetically appealing cars. Now, the Nissan Navara was not designed for aesthetic appeals alone. It was built as a utility vehicle. It's listed as a utility vehicle. In recent years, vans have been more efficient and also the culture of off-roading has diminished in Europe, has been coming to an end, is almost ceasing to exist. And this is leaving me to conclude that, yes, that's one of the reasons why the Navara is going to be axed out of Europe because less and less people are buying pickup trucks, especially the Nissan Navara. The Nissan Navara is becoming expensive for Nissan to sell in Europe, to produce in Europe. Uh, and also, uh, this is the, one of the reasons why Nissan is planning to uh, put an end to this. Uh, they are going to, uh, I think the, they're going to put more attention to the vans. When it comes to road friendliness, the first criteria that pop in your mind should be low ground clearance, maximum interior space, and uh, suspension that's uh, rather on the firm side. And those criteria are not at all met by 4x4s, unfortunately, like the Nissan Navara. Now I want to talk about what this could mean about the future of the pickup truck segment. 
What this could mean is that there are two routes. There are two ways I see this going. Either each manufacturer, year by year, they will discontinue the pickup trucks uh, of their own uh, and they will start coming up with uh, better vans or better, let's say, crossover SUVs or something to compensate for the pickup truck they've discontinued in their segment. Or they're still going to stick to pickup trucks, but they're going to make it more fuel efficient. And then eventually they're going to come up with electric pickup trucks for the EU market. Uh, I may be wrong, and I please excuse me if I'm wrong. Uh, please share your thoughts in the comments uh, if uh, you have any idea, because at this point I find the future of the pickup truck segment very questionable. There was a time when pickup trucks were genuinely used for hard work. They were used for constructions. They were used to carry a lot of things in the back. But in recent years, ever since the late 90s, Everyone has been using pickup trucks as aesthetics. People have been using it as an alternative to buying a SUV or a luxury car. Uh, it's for the same reason someone would buy a Ford Mustang or a muscle car. Uh, and uh, this has caused concerns, environmental concerns. I, I really hope that Nissan comes up with something uh, as a compensation for it. Uh, and, but then I also have thoughts that Nissan might not do anything about it because Nissan and Renault have an alliance, as I've emphasized before, and Renault is probably going to handle the European market whilst they're telling Nissan, look Nissan, let, let's do Europe, you handle the North American market. My conclusion about this is that I am... Uh, I'm in the neutral zone, okay? I cannot say it was a bad decision by Nissan. I think Nissan is doing a good job saving itself financially. But then this leaves me to wonder, the alliance between Renault and Nissan, wasn't the, the point of it that they were supposed to help each other? They were supposed to back each other into decisions? I don't know, and I will never know about that part. But all I can say is that Nissan did a good decision, financially speaking. And uh, I want to fully support, uh, I want to emphasize again my support for environmental concerns. The environment is first priority. And uh, also we need to find solutions to make cars more appealing, but in a fashion where they are still environmental friendly. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and stay tuned for more videos that are on the run.